Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. Welcome to episode 115. Laura, where have you been all my life? I've been in Key Largo. Look at this Florida's Buck mural behind me. That's how yeah. you know I'm in Key Largo. Yeah, I've been traveling a little bit. So, so I sent a you, hectic, when, you when, when you told me you were in Key Largo, I sent you the song that Gary Jacobs submitted as one of his top five yes. one hit wonders. Birdie Higgins, Key Largo. Great, Great song. song. <laughs> <laughs> I Greater, video. Video. Greater video. Yes, the video is almost a little painful. Honestly, yeah. and it, it, it's like, here's a guy on a boat on a day that probably could be a little bit better, clearly filmed from some other boat because you can see the splash coming up like the cinematography is bad and like sweaters around there tied around their necks and, you know, just looking very preppy and he smokes. Yeah. It's just, a yeah, it's, it's it starts, such an it early starts with him smoking. It's yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, there's really no words to describe it. You just have to watch it. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing piece of 80s. 80s something. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Why we are just you? Key, it. Why are you in Key Largo? I actually I don't know why you're there. Uh, we were scuba diving, nice. and we had planned to scuba dive for four days, and now there's a storm coming through, so we got two days in. Didn't get to dive today. Won't get to dive again before we leave. But that's just under the category of shit happens. Yeah, that sucks. So I have some powerlifting questions. So something occurred to me the other day when I was watching some kind of video, and it was Powerlifting America, and I was just like, does Powerlifting America drug test at all? They do. They supposedly follow the water code, which, you know, we've had, we ranted about this forever, but to my knowledge, it's only done at the, at the national level. I, I don't know mm. if they are testing at the local level or not. If they are, I don't know where they're getting the budget to do that because that was the big issue that we had right. was it, it's really freaking expensive to do that. So yeah. my assumption is no, or if they are, it's a very, very minimal select meets that they go to right and it would have to be third party testing correct yeah so it'd be like usada or cces or whatever that comes in which is really freaking expensive to have them come in so uh, my assumption is no but again don't quote me on that because i don't know that as fact but i know the numbers of what things cost and it it just isn't a reasonable option to do at every level at the level right. we're doing it. So sure. maybe they are. So maybe that, maybe that's their workaround. Maybe they're doing one drug test at every competition to say that they're drug testing fully water compliant at every meet. But if you have a 300 lifter local meet and you test one person, you know, is right. that really deterring anybody or huh. catching people that are cheating? Probably not. So, right. And if you know, you're only testing at the national level. Yeah. People know how to get around that. Right. Somewhere. So, uh, mm, so that's, that's what I know. I don't know if that's exactly how it is or not, but that's my assumption, I guess. Right. The other thing I noticed the other day on the, on the socials is so say hypothetically, you're an athlete that got popped for drug use in the um, USAPL a few years ago. And so now you're not allowed to compete with USAPL, obviously. But now that USAPL isn't part of the IPF, could you just you're magically clean again? Magically clean again. So and you wouldn't have to reinstate even though you'd failed a drug test? That's the bullshit of it too, because the water, again, going back to the water code, it says that, uh, non, how is it worded? Basically non water signatories should be acknowledged and enforced basically in water tested organizations, which means again, we, we still contend that we're water compliant based on the criteria, but the IPF is saying that we're not, that's part of the reason we got kicked out. Right. So they no longer, they were also saying that we had to reinstate all of our people that failed a drug test um, back when we were still with them because we, our drug tests weren't what they considered 
fully water compliant. So based on that, uh, they are essentially just ignoring any positive tests that we have. Wow. Which is so, great. So clearly they uh, are concerned with yeah, a lot of drug clean. use. Yeah, IPF. Way to go. Yeah, and, and part of their part of their argument is like our our yeah. testing is not like high enough standard to catch people, but we caught people, and now you're saying like now you're saying hey no you re come. reinstate them because that wasn't done right. the correct way. Well, right. if our testing is so shitty, why'd they fail? Right, and this has happened. It wasn't a hypothetical. Yeah. Question, by the way. So. Yeah. Boy, yeah. Makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah, it kind of makes me lose a lot of respect for the IPF, truthfully. Yeah, like it, when it gets to be about being compliant more than it is about actually being drug free. Yeah, it's on paper. It's it's whatever yeah. checks the boxes. And you know, part of the issue the IOC had with powerlifting is there's too many drug test failures. It, it's it's like a complete opposite. It's like there's too many drug test failures, and you have to be WADA compliant. Well, coincidentally, those things can work together. Because if all you do is water compliant testing, it doesn't matter how many, you don't even do any. So you can check the boxes and have less drug test failures if you test less people. So right. it's uh why are we going down this road? We've already like political. Sorry. We've just already the things that have that I've seen recently just on the yeah. socials been like, oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, I've been, weird. yeah, it's it's very yeah. frustrating. Well, there you go. Yeah. So what else is going on in the powerlifting world, Josh? Uh, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of meets in Georgia recently. The Valhalla awaits meet October 8th, the classic city collegiate meet on October 23rd and the Georgia state bench press meet on October 29th. Pretty busy October for Georgia. Nice. How was the bench only meet? It was fun. That was the new um, one. Yeah. Gretchen lifted and Olivia lifted. This was the fun meet. So there's a, a girl named Isabel from uh trueborn true alpha gym she lifted in the 75 kilo class and she broke olivia's state record bench by two and a half kilos at raw but olivia was lifting equipped and broke the equipped bench record by two and a half kilos that was held by lydia and the meat director was kathy mother of lydia so it's like a i don't know it's just like a fun Fun everyone's related events. yeah everyone's right. interconnected yeah kind of neat um, Small so world that's, of that's basically yeah that's basically the uh the updates i don't think you've sadly enough i don't think you've missed a whole lot in the last <laughs> how many how many <laughs> weeks have you been gone i feel like i haven't seen you forever uh, i think it's been like three or four weeks um yes yeah, it's, it's been and a the state meet registration i believe opened it did i don't know mm -hmm. if we're gonna drop this in for i guess we can say it here um the the entry fee is 175 and our team has decided not to do it. Yeah, that's an expensive meet. Yeah. So we are most meets that cost now. I mean, I don't. I mean, no the the Arnold like, is been a long the Arnold time, but... the Arnold I think is one fifty and Nationals is one sixty nine. So the state meet is more expensive than both of those. So I've been doing a little research. The Wisconsin state meet entry fee is ninety, and the Last year that I ran it in Georgia, it was 95 in 2020. So it's gone up a lot. Wow. But I will say this, there's like 147 people that have registered since it opened on November 1st and we're recording wow. on November 7th. So it's half full. They got it capped at 300. So people are paying it. So, I mean, I guess yeah. supply and demand, wow. but, but, our, but we have a lot of collegiate lifters on our team and, um, some of our lifters were doing it basically as a, as a semi mock meet going into the Arnold and it's not worth them. It's not worth it to them paying 175 to, to do a mock meet. Yeah. Essentially. It's kind of sad. Like I, I really, you know, we've, we've had a team every year since this team competition started in 2011 and this will be the first year we don't have a team. Wow. And you have a lifter that's lifted in every single Georgia State so he's still going to do it. I, I, yeah, so he's he still going to do it. He doesn't want to lose his. He doesn't want to lose right, his, his streak. Uh, his streak. Yeah, yeah. Chris right. Whiteson has lifted in every Georgia State meet since 2011. So wow. we have a, we have a few people on the team that are going to still compete, but 
you know, we're not, not going to not going to enter a team. No, oh, it's so sad, actually. It I is. Have, like, I agree. Like tear. This is like somber moments would be the episode title. Right? Like, yeah. how weird does life get when teamwork doesn't have a... Is there another pandemic? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's at that level. Like, wow. Yeah, feels like it. So, Dang. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, like, I'm sure I'll be there. Cause like we, we do have some, li- a few lifters lifting right. still, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be what you're used to seeing from us anyway. Dang. Well, on a lighter note, should we um, talk about what our next music list should be? Sure. Do you, I hope you know what that is. Cause I have no clue. I don't know. We could do like driving songs or we could do like, am I the only one who has actually like a list of songs that like, if I'm in a funk, that I put on to get out of a funk. Say that one more time. I think you just, my mind is blown right now. What did you say? When I'm in a funk, sometimes I have like a list of songs that I play to get out of the funk. Oh, You know, like when I'm mentally just like kind of down in the dumps, like the pick me up songs. I mean, I I like that. Um, I personally, I still would like to take another month before we start doing this because that's, it just, it's a lot of extra work. To, to do all the <laughs> graphics and to keep track of who's submitted what. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, kind of a cop out, but you know, we can, we can figure out what we're going to do. We can make it our goal to figure out the list. Yeah. All right. And then we can, I mean, start I'm, I'm good. In the I'm good with the, I'm good with the list that you said. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to do any work right now. <laughs> um, What's the, um, is it state farm making it easy? What's, what's the saying? I don't know. I, the only, the only one that I'm the one that gets sucked in by stupid marketing. So, um, protect yourself from mayhem like me. That's the only one I know. And that's, that's, uh, all, uh, I don't even know what it is, so it's not great marketing, but I remember. Yeah. The, the it guy that's all mayhem. mayhem. Right. You're right. It's not it's great Allstate. marketing if you don't even know who it was. Yeah. Protect yourself from mayhem like me. Or maybe yeah. I'm just thinking easy button. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we're not good consumers. No, we're, Bad we're consumer. <laughs> other, what about other than that? That's all we got. Uh, we have we have a new lifter tip. Okay, go. This was actually submitted by one of our lifters, and I like it a lot. Like it. it goes like this: prepare for things to go wrong outside of the lifts and learn how to deal with them. Example: too hot, too crowded, too noisy, distractions, etc. Yep. Agree or disagree, Laura? Totally agree. Totally right. Cause there'll always be times where there's like, uh, I don't know, something's too crowded. It's too cold in here. Oh my gosh. Look at these warm up room. It's too small. My plates aren't in pounds for warm up attempts. They're in kilos. What does that mean? Like there'll always be yeah. little things that don't go right. Agreed. Developing the ability to kind of roll with it and just be okay. Whatever it is really important. I agree. I don't have a powerlifting situation this week. Do you? No. Damn. We I should can't come honestly up with say. One. You've already talked about the uh, competing oh, on. I, I have one. Oh, oh, you came up with them just that quick. I remember. It. So right, go. Here's the powerlifting situation this week, and it's based on a social media post that I saw. It's a video. There's a there's a lady squatting. There's a lady behind the lady squatting, just kind of standing there, and there's another lady, a third lady, kind of in the front kind of like cheering on the lady that's squatting. The lady finishes, she racks the bar and walks out from under the rack. The lady in the front starts backing up under to get under the bar. The lady behind starts walking under to get under the bar and they run into each other and they get into a fist fight. And my question is, who has the right of way? <laughs> wow. That's, they get into a fist fight over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know that there's a certain right of way, like, but usually like in training, people usually tend to kind of just establish an order as you're kind of going, like I lift and, you know, Colin would lift and then Gretchen would lift and then it'd be my turn again. Like it would kind of go in a round Robin ish. Right. So I would think that round Robin would be established at some point. I guess it wasn't already. I mean, here's the thing though. Like, I don't know if they know each other or not. Like maybe they were waiting on the rack to open up. Maybe that was what it was. I don't know because I can't see two people that know each other slash on the same team slash our training partners literally getting into a fist fight about who's next. 
if anything, they're going to fight over who gets to rest longer on our team. <laughs> right. So did the weight on the bar remain the same? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was like a bar with like a 25 on each side. So I, maybe they were all trying to warm up or something. I, I don't know. It yeah, was really weird. Weird lifter etiquette. Like, hey, it's not going to take that long. Go ahead and you do your set and I'll do my set. It's not that hard. I would go back to the new lifter tip and go, go roll with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a odd powerlifting situation. Yeah. But it could uh, yeah, it's it would be interesting to see what people say. I got to figure out how I'm going like, to word that on the on the graphic. Yeah, I, I'd really love for you to find the uh, the actual social media repost so I can see that. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Good. I'll repost that. Yeah, and then the next slide will be who has the right of way in this situation. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> who who has the claim to the who who has the rightful claim to the bar? I think the person behind the bar, not in front of the bar, because that's bars don't too. get a, a so sh- you don't approach the bar from the front. You that's what I think too. Them. And the only caveat to that is it it really looks like the person in front and the person lifting know each other and are together. And it really looks like the person back behind, she's not even. In, I have to watch it again. But I don't think she's even in the screen during the squat. But as soon as it racks, she starts walking, and you see her come into the the screen towards getting under the bar and they just like bump into each other. So I, I don't know. Mm. Oh, we've really, so many we've really, I feel like this podcast is really. For, for, it for should not, just be called random powerlifting conversations with Josh and Laura. <laughs> I mean, it could just be like random, just the BS podcast. You never know what you never know what you're going to get. Powerlifting mostly music yeah. kind of it's okay. So funny enough, we actually had some really good episodes while you were gone because we had some people on. So it was, it was fun to let them talk and get some of their, some of their insight right. and stories and things. And we actually have a lot of people coming up. So, so who do we have coming up, Josh? Can we say, so, can we say, can we say, uh, we can. So next week we have Jordan Coomer coming on. Uh, he's basically the guy that you see being the platform manager at every single USA powerlifting meet in Georgia. He, and, well, nationals too he he works there some too but um he's coming on and i'm still twisting his arm a little bit on this because he's not a big talk about himself kind of guy so you know the person I, I, I like the best but i think i i, I wanted to I actually asked him to come on because i want to actually talk about him and why why he does what he does and let people kind of know who the person is that they all have probably interacted with on the platform you know nice. let him let him you know share his his story a little bit. So that's next week. Then the week of the twenty first, Drew Cargill is coming on, which is the the week after Jordan's on. And Drew is the owner of Valhalla, and he ran the Valhalla weights meet. And he also is a oh, I just said that he's a meet director. <laughs> and then after that, and then after that, uh, the week of. The 28th, the week after Thanksgiving, Kathy and Becky are coming on the oh, Georgia State wow, Chairs. Okay. So this is an election year. So we're going to hear what they have to say and see what their thoughts are, you know, after their first term and what we can look forward to, assuming they're running again. Right. So. All right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. So uh, are you going to be here next week? I mean, I believe so. <laughs> that's a that's a soft commitment but okay Got i it. won't be in key largo i will be back to my regular domicile all right disappointingly cool. but yes well i'm not gonna lie i've missed you and oh okay. they were good episodes but it just wasn't the same oh. some of the little jokes and like things that i say that i am expecting a semi response from people are just not responding well, to no, people don't get your humor yeah it's really mm-hmm. hurts me it's terrible so So if nothing else, thank you for humoring me and uh, we'll see you next week. Yes. Yes. We'll see you next week with Jordan. All right. Later. like fun. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.